you may wonder, you know, this class, we all the first half of the class, we talked about mechanics and pore, and pores flow and poral elasticity, poral mechanics. Why, when we've been doing this um, finite element there, development do we use this really generic sort of mathematical equation, right? So, um, you know, our, our generic equation has been, that we've been working with, is this guy. Well, if we make a table here, I mean, the reason is, and it's obvious when we've solved the, the, our bar problems that we are dealing with elasticity, but if we make a table here of, say, U, A, C, F, and Q, and then if I write heat transfer here, Flow here, elasticity here. Well, so in a heat transfer problem, U is the temperature, T. Uh, in a flow problem, it would be the pressure, P. And in elasticity, it's the displacement, which we usually use U for. Um, in a heat transfer problem, A would be the thermal conductivity, kappa. Uh, it would be the resistance to flow. In a, so in, in our Darcy model, that would be like K over mu, permeability over the viscosity, right? Uh, and in elasticity, that's the stiffness. So it's AE, right? In heat transfer, if you had convection, <coughs> that would be C. Um, we won't consider convective flow, so those are zero in those two cases. F is where if you had a distributed heat generation, uh, you could also, I guess, have a d distributed distributed generation in a flow problem. This would be uh, in, the, in elasticity and axial force distribution. And then your Q would be, you know, some point heat source, some point pressure source, uh, some point load. So with this model 1D equation that we've been using, we have been solving or learning how to solve elasticity problems and poor elasticity problems right, at the same time, in fact. And so on your homework, you're asked to write a generic 1D code, which includes all the ability to include all of those terms, right? And so with that generic 1D code, just depending on what you put in, for your A, C, and F, fun and Q functions, you have a generic code that can solve problems that include all of these physics in 1D. And so, and one of the reasons I was sort of rushing through class so far is I wanted to make sure and have time. I'm gonna now work an example, uh, which sort of includes everything, right? So we're gonna uh, assemble uh, so we're going to work a 1D example where we have multiple elements and we assemble everything and everything like that, right? Now, I'm not going to do your... Yeah? What? Yeah. Oh, it'd be like a distributed... Uh, uh, distributed source, you know, so if you had like a pressure distribution across one boundary or something like that.
So, well, you could have, I mean, if, if I gave you one boundary and I gave you a function that describes the pressure distribution on, on it, <coughs> you should integrate that function via f, right? If I give you a point, you know, pressure, or, or uh, Q rather, I mean that rate, and that if we're, really if we're talking about like a Darcy flow model, that would be a, an injection. If, you know. So that would be, be over here. Well, no, I mean the, the, Dir the Dirac delta function would be if, you, if I gave you a point source that wasn't at a node, okay? You could treat it, I mean if that, in that case, you, you know, I use the delta function to just say that what you get is p times the shape function. You use the shape functions to distribute. And it was via that f. But in other words, if I give you a pressure, like if I say, okay, on this boundary, there is a pressure distribution that's, you know, p naught times one minus x over L, right? That's gonna be like a linear pressure distribution across the element. You should use this to integrate that directly over the element. So when we're talking about flow, we're talking about slow flow, right? There's no convection. So it's really kind of Darcy flow. All right. So the way I'm going to write this code, I'm not going to do your homework for you. Um, 